The thing that stands out to me most about this election, and as you know, as you noted, I've been around for a fair number of these elections, is that in the midst of all this chaos, the electorate has been remarkably stable. We often talk about uh, October surprises, and I think the thing that's the biggest surprise this October is that nothing seems to matter. Um, people's minds are made up. We think back at sort of the month we've had, um, there have been so many things that have happened and yet none of them seem to have really um, caused like a massive change in the sort of way the winds are blowing. Um, so, you know, like Trump's COVID diagnosis didn't seem to massively change anything. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death and Amy Coney Barrett's nomination haven't seemed to really change anything. It's just been trending in a general direction and none of these things have seemed to make a huge impact. Um, and I, I don't know if this is because, you know, people had already had made up their minds or if this is sort of the end game of four years of a new cycle that just never seems to stop. Uh, I, I think the, the reality is that polarization predates Donald Trump and the buildup in terms of the amount of, of dislike uh, and, and feelings of antipathy, antipathy between the two parties and, and you know bordering on this idea of really thinking that the other side is a threat to our country and our way of living, um, that's been building for years. And so I don't think that this election is going to change that. I think uh, having someone other than President Trump as president may mean the news cycle is quieter and may mean we're hearing less directly um, from a president in, in terms of kind of um, fanning the flames of many of the things that are, are most contentious in our society. Um, but I don't think that the outcome of this election is, is likely to change the trajectory that we're on. I was struck by a couple of surveys that I saw not long ago that asked people how they would feel if their candidate lost the election. And I was surprised that uh, Biden supporters were much more likely to say that they would be extremely upset if, if uh, their candidate lost the election than Trump supporters were. Candidate Biden has articulated and what he will try to do is return to a status quo ante. He's, all signs suggest he's going to try to uh, govern from the center, bring in Republicans and Democrats, and then try to reconstitute American leadership in the world. So whether you want to call that the liberal world order or something different, sort of return to international organizations, return to the normal U.S. leadership in NATO, et cetera. Um, I, in the, I'm, I'm super pessimistic on this one. People who look at horse race coverage in the media become more certain about what the outcome of an election is going to be and actually become less interested in participating. And so one of the concerns that political scientists and um, statisticians are starting to, to really voice is that forecasting is not just telling us what is likely to happen, but it's actually changing what is likely to happen by shaping who, be, who decides to join in the electorate.